Now we move on to the fourth method of preparation of alkene and this is going to be a very important reaction. This reaction is dehydration. Now dehydration is the term that we are familiar with. Dehydration is removal of water molecule. We all have dehydration once in our time. And uh, then we have to take ORS solution, oral rehydration solution. Because we had dehydration, so we have to rehydrate our body. Dehydration means removal of water. Suppose I have, I take a simple uh, substrate, I take ethanol. Dehydration will be occurring in alcohol. I take the simplest alcohol that can give dehydration just to focus on mechanism and I take a reagent I'll talk about the reagent but the product that we would get is a alkene so ethanol will give us ethene now to look at it in a different way I can write ethanol as this this is CH3, CH2 and one of the hydrogen I have shown with a bond and this is CH2OH. Now what happens, this water molecule actually comes out and that gives us ethene. So OH, of course one of the alcoholic group would be coming out and one of the hydrogen from adjacent carbon would also come out. Adjacent carbon or it can be any other carbon if there is a rearrangement, we will see that but for the time being, we can look at the dehydration reaction as OH from one of the carbon and hydrogen from another carbon. They together would be clapped into water molecule. And these two carbon, because they have lost one bond, this carbon has lost a bond with OH, this carbon has lost a bond with hydrogen. So they will together form a bond to compensate for that lost bond. And we will get an alkene. So this is dehydration. So what you have to start learning quickly is the product of dehydration would be alkene and the reactant on which the dehydration would occur would be alcohol. Now let's talk about the reagent. Reagent would be dilute acid. A acid that is not an oxidizing acid like nitric acid can't be taken and uh, similarly other strong acids can't be taken. Hydrated or concentrated uh, sulfuric acid is a strong oxidizing acid and we don't take a very very concentrated sulfuric acid we don't have to take very dilute sulfuric acid as well but we have to take a reasonable concentration of sulfuric acid and we have to take a huge amount of heat now why those things that would be clear as we proceed into the mechanism so let's see the mechanism of this reaction this reaction will occur in three steps and you have to remember those three steps as I'm writing. Step number one. Now again intuitively you have to start predicting the mechanism what can occur. Now alcohol is a neutral molecule nothing can happen there. Alcohol can't initiate the reaction because in alcohol all the atoms have completed their octet or duplet. Reaction is occurred by those species which are rich in electron and deficient or deficient in electron. Now you have sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid is an acid. Now that will produce lots of H plus ion into the system. When you produce lots of H plus ion in the system, those H plus ion goes in search of electron. So the step number one would be those H plus ion will come to alcohol and ask for electron. And in the alcohol, the electron rich site is oxygen because it has lone pair. Carbon doesn't have any electron, unpaired electron, a lone pair, hydrogen doesn't have. So the only site to go is oxygen. So the first step is protonation. This H plus or this proton is would come out and would form a bond with oxygen. When oxygen forms a bond, it has to give its electron to the to hydrogen, which is having empty orbital. So electronic transfer has to occur from oxygen to hydrogen so oxygen will develop a plus charge now this plus charge does not signify removal of electron from the oxygen orbital this plus charge is only showing there's a coordinate bond 
and in that coordinate bond both the electron has come out of the orbital of oxygen look oxygen is having its octet complete it has having two electron in its own orbital now those two electrons are in in this bond and the two electrons in this bond belongs to both hydrogen and oxygen so oxygen as such hasn't lost any electron the only thing is previously it was the both electron belonged only to oxygen in the form of lone pair and here this is the property of both hydrogen and oxygen so this is not unstable plus charge as we consider this c plus to be because this c plus carbon is having only 6 electron but this o plus is having 8 electron the other lone pair is there and the three bonds so this is not highly unstable kind of oxygen this is the oxygen that plus charge is showing only that the electron in the coordinate bond has come from oxygen that's it so the first step is protonation this pro this step is called protonation because it is giving electron to a proton step number 2 would be removal of water molecule now this step we have done numerous time before and i have told you water is a good living group water is a thermodynamically stable solvent it's a thermodynamically stable liquid water forms 2 to 3 hydrogen bond in the liquid state depending upon the temperature and because of that hydrogen bonding the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius it's very high so water is a thermodynamically stable solvent when a stable molecule whenever a stable molecule is formed in a substrate it tries to leave the substrate and have a independent existence now this is a old story so what would happen water molecule would be removed off so water molecule will come out as neutral water molecule charged species are not stable and this of oxygen is having a plus charge in it so this the electron from this bond would be taken away from by the oxygen to come out as h2o neutral so when oxygen does that this poor carbon gets devoid of its electron because this bond has two electrons one of the oxygen and one of is of carbon so oxygen to get rid of the plus charge needs one electron so one of the electron is oxygen's own electron so taking away that electron will not give a extra negative charge to compensate or to neutralize that positive charge taking away the next electron neutralizes that plus charge so oxygen takes away both the electrons so when it does that the carbon gets devoid of its electron and gains a plus charge and water comes out no problem up till here the first step is protonation the next step is removal of water step number 3 Now in the third step what would happen something has to happen to this carbon this carbon can't remain as plus charge as carbocation having plus charge till eternity now within some microsecond this carbon has to complete its octet because this plus charge is this plus charge on carbon is making this carbon unstable now let's look at the possibility what could can happen this carbon either can form a bond with some other group so that this octet would be complete so that is one of the possibility now you have to think in such direction and you have to start thinking the way i am teaching you to think otherwise this thing uh, will remain as elusive as it was before and you are you will not be able to command over organic chemistry so things are simple what you have to do is you have to stabilize this carbon and the way of stabilizing is making a new bond so there are two possibilities that can happen here suppose this there's a group g having a lone pair that that group g can form a bond with this c so this kind of structure can be formed this plus charge and this negative charge or lone pair can form a bond so this carbon will be happy to form a new bond or what can happen is somebody can come and snatch a hydrogen from this carbon so one of the carbon will gain a negative charge adjacent carbon is having a plus positive charge plus minus will form a bond then both will be happy this is the only two way to get rid of the plus charge of the carbon there's no other third way so things are not very very difficult there is a limited possibility that can happen at any stage of a mechanism and that can be easily be predicted by you 